Water. I think most of us, including myself, take water for granted, don't we? You know, it's so easy to go into your kitchen, turn on the tap, fill the kettle up, go upstairs, fill the bath, have a shower. We don't really think of it because it's readily there available, isn't it? You know, we've built these humongous you know, reservoirs throughout the country, you know, and in Leicestershire, I think Thornton Reservoir was the first one that was built in around about 1854 to supply the, the ever-growing city of Leicester with uh, water, you know, but it wasn't until the early 1900s where, you know, people started to be able to have access to water in the homes, you know, it, it began to be more affordable, I think, as well. And mains water, I think, was actually invented in the 1600s in London, believe it or not. And, you know, that was only reserved for the for the wealthiest of people. It weren't for us plebs, do you know what I mean? Of course it weren't. You know, but by the early 1900s, we'd started moving away from wells a bit more. And, uh, you know, people were put uh, more onto mains water. And then by around about the 1930s, I think most of the UK was on mains water. But in 1903, I mean, the house that I live in, when it was built... You know, that had a, a well just outside the back door in the yard. And as you can see there, that is the slab outside my back door. And you can see carved within the top of the slab, it says, well. And I do keep meaning to uncover that, you know, to have a bit of a nosy. You know what, that might be one for another video. We ought to check that out. But as per usual, it's all about exploration and getting his boots on the ground and muddy. Although, to be fair, I only had my uh, trainers on today. But what you're looking at here, courtesy of the National Library of Scotland, is an Ordnance Survey map dated around about 1884 just on the outskirts of Ashby de la Zouche. well at least it used to be as you're going to see shortly it's now surrounded by suburbia now there are four wells that we're looking at in this video two of them are classed as holy wells including this one now a holy well was somewhere that people traveled you know from miles around uh, to visit to because they believed that the waters in these holy wells uh, had healing properties and they'd also leave you know you know ritualistically you know gifts and what have you and offerings at these sites back in the day but this one as you're going to see is completely surrounded by suburbia anyway oh and before i forget hello hey up and hey diddly my name is steve once again it's a great big welcome from myself to let's explore i forgot all about that one didn't i at the start of the video anyway let's get his boots on the ground and go and have a nosy shall we well get his trainers muddy and wet and what have you come on let's go and do it Right then, so this is our first port of call today. We're in Ashby de la Zouche in this suburban area. But of course, you know, back in the, the 1880s, as you can see now on the map, it wasn't a suburban area because just down here in this tree line, we've got a holy well. Now, many people will walk up and down here every day with the dogs and what have you. You know, and they won't realise what's down here. You know, people would have travelled from miles around to visit this well. And just before I forget, I've just been talking to a local, Oliver, who lives just over there. He's just come and approached me and he says, oh, I know who you are, I watch your video. So, hello, mate, if you're watching. Right, we need to get through here. Now, I did come down here in the summer, so I know that the well is still there. I've uh, got this new building site, so hopefully they haven't fenced it off fully. So, no, they haven't, so that's good then. Right, let's get down here. Oh, Indiana Jones in it on a Sunday afternoon. It's a beautiful day. It's quite mild, actually. Yeah, they haven't put any uh, Harris fence panels up. We've just got a bit of uh, barbed wire here like we had in the summer when I came down. But yeah, we've got, a, we've got a building site. Those houses weren't actually there. I think they were just footings last time I came down. So we're not interested in that anyway. We're not going in there. Only interested in the well, which is just down there. I love what there is to find, you know, in the strangest of, of places. You know, completely surrounded by suburbia. I've got to watch my foot in here. It's quite a steep cutting that's been gradually, you know, carved out by this spring over well, maybe thousands of years, who knows. Wish I'd put my boots on now. But yeah, so, People would have travelled from miles and miles to come and, you know, bathe in the what they thought were healing waters. And do you know what? They may well have been healing. <laughs> you know, water is kind of the, the old giver of life, isn't it? So that does make sense. Right. It's like a little weir there, look. So that is the start of it there. But we'll get closer. It's quite... <laughs> God, watch it, it's quite, uh, it's quite precarious. Oh. Right, so this spring then, this holy well, 
of Aspidella Zouche rises just under this bank here. So just under there, it's a bit like at um, Holwell where we went in the summer. So, and here it is, look. So they were holding the water back in. Now, if you look at this, look, it's a really intricate piece of brickwork. A beautiful old archway, look at that. Ain't that nice? Now, I'm not sure, I can't see any evidence of one, but I don't know if the, there may have been a bit of a, a sluice on that once. A bit of a sluice gate valve. I couldn't tell you. But you've got this weir here. If I just get round the other side. So if you do come down here and look for this well, just be warned, it is quite precarious if you're going to enter it from this end where it actually rises. I mean, you could walk up the brook where your well is on. Um, I'm not sure what access is like down there, but, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> it is quite precarious here. Right, I've survived that bit, just about. <laughs> oh, all for the love of nosiness, eh? But you can see, you can see this cutting. It's it's quite it's quite summit to be honest when you're down here. And look at that. Ain't that pretty? That ain't bad that ain't you know. Right, so you can see it a lot better at this angle. We're at the front of the weir now, so at the top you've got red engineering brickwork. Uh, I'm not sure that's maybe stonework there. It looks like it. There's a lot of uh, moss and what have you grown on it now. Bit of rubbish there but you can clearly see that beautiful little arch now that must have served a purpose um, unless it really is just decorative but maybe there was some sort of sluice there once i really don't know because i'm imagining maybe that back end you know behind it there could have been a bit of a bath there where people could actually uh, get into the water and have a bathe or maybe it was just here between the arch and this weir wall of course but it's quite interesting because you've got this old piece of metal pipe work here look so they were clearly holding this back and at some point they were pumping this water uh, while well, using gravity from this point and uh, further on down the stream maybe to the actual uh, the town of Ashby itself which you know back in the day as we've already mentioned would have been you know a good half a mile away uh, or three quarters of a mile away from this actual site before they built you've got a bit of a plinth there look and you can see a dent an indentation in it that is where this pipe continued through here on top of there, I assume. Uh, there was most likely more of them down there at some point, but I'm not gonna walk that brook today. I just really wanted to show you this little beauty here. Yeah, very pretty that, a nice thing to come across in the middle of suburbia, isn't it? Something that survived for a very, very long time. Anyway, so what we need to do now is leave Ashby de la Zouche and go to Whittick near Colville in Leicestershire. So I've got another well to show you. Let's go and have a nose there. Right then, so we're now down at Whittick and I'm actually stood on the old Charmwood Forest railway line. Got the old, uh, what remains of the platform there. Now it's St John's Baptist Church that we're interested in. Now I was going to actually go in the graveyard and actually do some filming there, but it's Remembrance Sunday and they've got a, a gathering in there. So if you hear any uh, pipes blowing and uh, drums and what have you, you'll know what it is, it's from that. I've just been watching it actually, it was quite nice. So this spring then, which is down here, it flows into the Grace Dew Brook just down here. And of course, there's the church there. Now, the amazing thing about this is, uh, I was reading on the internet that apparently in the 19th century, so in the 1800s, uh, this spring that is actually beneath this church, uh, in the chancel, apparently, uh, beneath there, they actually used it to power the bellows of the church organ, unbelievably. Now, you've got the, um, you've got the Grace Dew Brook down here. We've, we've explored that before. There's a beautiful uh, old culvert, a large culvert down there that goes beneath the Charmwood Forest Railway. And just down here, piped up, ending up in this brook, is this spring. Let's say a nose there. Right, so you've got the back of the church there, and then of course just down here, down these steps, very old steps as well these are, you've got this spring that, so of course, they were using this water then in the, 18th, uh, in the 1800s to power the church organ then later on of course decided to pipe this from here uh, from the church into the brook so very interesting that it just shows you what little bits and bobs there are to find don't they in our neck of the woods 
Right then, so now I've showed you this beautiful old spring here, which is babbling away in the background, chattering away at me, telling me to clear off. Let's get over to the beautiful village of Griffey Dam in northwest Leicestershire to show you another lovely village well. Let's go and have a nose there. Right then, so for his next well, we're in the beautiful village of Griffey Dam in northwest Leicestershire. Now this well that we're going to look at is just behind the camera, just over there, just over your right shoulder. And it's said that in, uh, uh, back in the day that there was a, a mythical creature known as the Griff that used to protect this well. Well, let's just hope the Griff ain't here today because we need to go and have a nose there. <laughs> Come on, beautiful path. I've just walked up here two or three times to... Uh, actually get me shot on me walking down but I've not got my mic set up properly had I because I'm a bit daft like that right so here it is then the Griffey Dam well and uh, very well tucked away at the bottom of this uh, road here that's actually called Bottom Road, I think, uh, between the road and this private residence to my left here. But as you can see, beautiful old well, it's actually, it's actually gated off. Makes sense really, keeps people out of it. But, you know, this would have been uh, the centre of the village really, village life, because you know, this day and age, I suppose, you know, we take it for granted that you can just turn a tap on and have a bath, drink a water, fill the kettle up, you know, wash clothes in the washing machine. But you know, back in those times, not that they would have complained about it because it was part of everyday life. Uh, this would have been a social event, I suppose, coming to fetch water from, from the village well. And you know, we take it for granted, don't we, I suppose, but it's fantastic. Beautiful stone round here as well. Really, really old this. And you know, imagine the conversations that are taking place around this well. You know, absolutely fantastic. The Griffey Dam well. Lovely. Right then, so the final well of this video uh, is another holy well. It's the second one in the video. Of course, the first one was in Ashby de la Zouche. This one is on the outskirts of Loughborough. And uh, it's actually right next to the, to the Loughborough University campus. But I just want you to look at this map here because this is an Ordnance Survey map from around about 1882. Now it says there, Holy Well Hall. Well, apparently that's a, that's a mistake. It should actually say Holy Well Hall, spelt H-A-W, as in Hawthorn Bush. Now, I found a very interesting website this morning called the Megalithic Portal. And uh, there's a little piece about it on here. And basically, what's happened, when, when they surveyed the site, they've just left it as Holywell Hall. And that's what it apparently it was later known as. But it should be Holywell Hall. Now, that means that this well, the Holy Well, was surrounded by, uh, I think, a, a hedge boundary. So, a Hawthorn boundary. Now that's what it should have uh, meant and what it should have spelt on this map. So I just thought I'd uh, keep you in the loop with that. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, without any further ado, let's go and uh, have a gander and a walk about around uh, Loughborough University campus, as you do, to look for this well. Let's go and have a nose there. Eh? Right then, here we are on the Loughborough University campus. And this is where we'll hopefully find our next well, the Holy Well, of course. One of those wells where I imagine people would have traveled for miles to hopefully get the benefits of its healing powers within the water. Uh, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find this one today. Now, before we go and find it, uh, big shout out to my mate, Andy Price, who watches my videos. Hello, mate, if you're watching, because it was Andy that sent me the information about this place and pretty much showed me where it was on the maps. So thanks a lot, mate. Right, let's try and find it. <laughs> University of all places. I think I might have to go back on myself, actually. It may be around these trees somewhere. Anyway, let's go on our nose there. Right then, so after a lot of walking about on the university campus, I didn't have to actually do that much to be honest, I found it quite easily. Got the university campus buildings behind us, and then just here, you've actually got a style, so whether this is a public path, I'm not sure, there's no keep out signs. But where, what looks like upside down boats, I think that is the actual well, so I was going to have a nose there, so it was a lot easier to find than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you, it's a bit rickety this style as well. Right, and there it is. Now, what looked like uh, boats that had been turned upside down are some sort of cover. Now, as you can see, you've got newish red engineering brickwork there, so they've actually done a lot of work around this uh, to preserve it. 
can actually look inside it here, so. Oh dear. Right, and here it is. An ancient well, amazing stuff. Now what they've done, they've actually, like I say, I've got to stick my head in. So, got some old pipe work there, look. Now what this would have looked like centuries ago, I don't know, there is still evidence, if you look carefully down there, of really old stonework. And in the modern era, they've built up on top of it with concrete, concrete, <laughs> with concrete look. So that water does look absolutely gin clear though. So amazing. I was actually expecting and hoping to get down here and see a lot of stonework, but not quite the case, unfortunately. And an outlet pipe up there, which will be going into the brook. So I did read with this particular well that it, it's constant and as you've just seen there's a continuality of water actually in the well itself. I'm not going to go down here, it looks really boggy and I ain't got my boots on. But as you can see there look, four inch plastic drain pipe there with the overspill and that is continuous and they reckon that this is some of the purest water around. I mean I'm not quite sure how true that is but uh, just shows you don't it. Right, let's get out of here. Right, well I hope you enjoyed this little video. Something a bit different for you to be fair, weren't it? And as many of you know, I'm fascinated by uh, water courses and where water actually comes from. You know, the sources of rivers and stuff. I've not really gone into depth with anything like that on my videos. Maybe I should because it is an area that does fascinate me to be honest with you. Um, but I think we've seen some interesting things there. I mean, the one in Ashby, I mean, that's fantastic, isn't it? You know, surrounded by suburbia, you know, people would have been going on pilgrimages, well, I can never say that, pilgrimages, <laughs> over the course of millennia, perhaps, to find and bathe within the waters of that one at Ashby. Just like this one here, the one at Griffey Dam, of course, being more about drinking water, I suppose. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please share it, because when you share the videos, hopefully help someone else to find it and watch them and hopefully they subscribe as well and also that like button you know if you click that like button i know i mentioned this now and again but apparently if you did like it you know click like and it really does help with the algorithms apparently and it helps put your you know project your videos according to form I don't know how true that is anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you at the next one bye bye